Okay, so here we are in the greenhouse once again. Um, temperatures are starting to climb. It is late February when the sun comes out and the thermal masses are still warm. We're touching 105 in here. We touched 105 degrees in here today. And I'll, uh, I'll throw a chart up um, for that. This video is primarily about the DS18B20 sensor and two different wiring methods that go with that. Um, so to that end, I'm going to get right into it. Uh, the one wire DSB1820 Dallas Instruments one wire digital temperature sensor uh, has two different modes it can be wired in. One is normal power mode and the other one is a parasitic power mode. So uh, I'll briefly go into the difference between the two. So here we are inside the Raspberry Pi box with the Pi Easy Connect on top of it. <clears throat> and so I'm just going to zoom in close here and let you have a look at this right here. You can see I'm pulling 3.3 volts up here and uh, through a resistor. I believe that's a 4.7k ohm resistor. Um, and then we're going into GPIO port 4 which is pin 7 on the Raspberry Pi 4 and then uh, that goes out on the data line going to the sensors and then on the other side we have a ground to close so in normal mode you send a power feed <coughs> which uh, is not here but I will be stripping this out momentarily you would send power at 3.3 or actually you can run 5.0 volts also uh, out to the sensors and then you'd have a separate data line which would be this line here connected to GPIO 4 and a ground and the sensors are powered they have power fed to them all the time so they're always they always have access to power and then the GPIO port manages uh, polling the sensors for the data however currently this is wired in parasitic mode and in this mode basically the GPIO port manages two things power for the sensors and data collection from the sensors so uh, it, the port pulls uh, voltage out on the line and that charges a small capacitor in each one of the sensors and then it drops that voltage and requests or waits for data from the sensors sorry uh, waits for data from the sensors back and collects that data and then turns power back onto the line again and recharges the capacitor. So basically it takes advantage of the capacitor that's built into the sensors to power them between charges and data grabs. But I'm going to go back because I've been getting all sorts of, if you looked at that chart before, you can see all sorts of errors in there where we're getting like readings of 185 and 32 and that sort of thing. And that is in part because of noise and also probably in part because I have a fairly long run for parasitic power mode for this. Okay, so uh, so that's basically it. I'm going to switch out here. I'm going to take this resistor off. I'm going to put this uh, I'm going to put this data line back to GPIO4 like it is, but I'm going to remove the resistor and the power feed for it. Get you a closer shot here, and then. Uh, I'm going to uh, run a separate power lead out. I'll strip this line back and we'll have three wires coming in here. We'll have a power, a ground, and a data to GPIO4. And then uh, we'll see if that cleans up our data collection because uh, I can't I can't have 185 degree temperature readings every so often uh, either for outside or inside when I start running the software that compares between inside and outside temperature because that software controls the vents and if we're getting false readings of 185 every so often then we're going to be opening the vents when we don't want to and uh, so we can't have that happening so I gotta, I gotta clean up my data collection my plan was to not even mess with this until I moved over to the Arduino for data collection and then just pipe data to the Pi but there's a lot going on in my life right now so I'm not going to get to that for a couple of weeks it looks like so, um, anyway, I thought this would make a, uh, a good video to help, uh, help people understand how to wire and use the DS18B20 in both modes. Okay, now, so hopefully you can see 
that we have three wires now the red being power the black being data and the shielded or braided being ground I'm going to plug the black wire into GPIO 4 labeled G4 P7 I'm going to plug power into 3.3 And ground into ground. I should mention that this Easy Connect, if you look, has a resistor going between uh, the power and the data line for the GPIO input. If uh, if you're not running an Easy Connect, you will need a resistor, a 4.7k ohm resistor, and that's that uh, yellow, purple, red uh, resistor there. You'll need that between those uh, to provide a, uh, a reference voltage, basically. Alright, so there we go. I eliminated the resistor, cleaned up the ends. I actually tinned the ends with a solder iron a little bit so they go in nice and easy into these Easy Connect slots. They're a, a little tough to get the wire inserted into sometimes. Uh, so we have 3.3 uh, volt power. GPIO4, aka pin 7, and ground wired directly to the sensors. I guess I'll just show you uh, where we come out of this cable to the sensors on the other end quick. So that cable runs from the Pi up, across, and in. And there's actually two sensors wired off it right now. I used to have a lot more in here, and I, I will have more again. Um, and you can see I pulled it apart just to confirm that my wiring was correct to go into normal power mode And it is you can see the yellow data line coming out of the sensors and going to the black wire going into that shielded cable The ground black line coming off of the sensors and going to the shielded black ground cable And then of course red coming out of the sensors and going to red power on the cable So uh, the sensors these particular ones come with a three meter cable so one is here right next to the uh, um, thermometer in the greenhouse and uh, the other one goes through the back wall of the greenhouse to the outside and it's mounted on a stick stick it out like this basically for now just so we have a, an external reference temperature all right let's fire this up and see if it still works one more thing I should note uh, if you're going to do any sort of any kind of wiring on your Pi uh, to any kind of sensor, I would power the Pi off and I would disconnect all power to the power bus. Uh, so I have done that here. This is a 12 volt power connector that goes to my 12 volt to 5 volt adapter. Don't mind all the noise my audio amplifier is picking up. And, uh, and that 5 volt adapter comes into the Pi and provides power to the Pi. Uh, 5.1 to 5.25 volts necessary for the 3 and 4. Alright, I'm going to power it up. And uh, we'll see what she does. So before we get on to the simple part of this, I just want to say I had ongoing sensor issues last year. Uh, that's what drove me to use the parasitic power mode on these sensors. Uh, I just was in frustration and I didn't have time to mess with it. And so now uh, I just hooked these back up in normal power mode, went to boot the Pi, the Pi wouldn't boot. I looked at 5 volt bus voltage, it was 0.26. So that told me that the uh, power converter was limiting power, probably due to a short. So I disconnected power again, and I came back over here. I put the multimeter on the power and the ground side of the, the two sensors here, and I got a reading about 1 ohm, which is way too much current for anything like this. So uh, I pulled out, I had some new sensors ordered, I brought them in, and uh, I hadn't hooked them up yet. Uh, so I went and compared against those, and uh, on the 2000K ohm range, they're reading around 686. So a massive difference in reading. So I suspect that may have been part of the root cause of some of my sensor issues. 
they were ongoing back in the spring last year. So uh, just a heads up, that's an easy way to see if the sensor is completely shot and why your one wire network or sensors might not be showing up on the network. If, uh, if you get a bad one and it's shorting power, it'll take the whole network down. So uh, easy way to look, uh, look for uh, the resistance between power and ground. If you got a really low number, uh, you probably have some sort of short. All right, onward. Okay, here we are, just soldered up for uh, testing. Uh, no anything between them. Being very careful to make sure they stay split apart. And, uh, these are the two new sensors that are connected. We'll just uh, bring it up, make sure they address and list, and all that, and then. Uh, We'll stick one outside to replace the outside and keep one inside to replace the inside. And then we'll look at the temperature readings and uh, figure out what our addressing should be. Ready? Boot. Well, that's a matter of sign. Got a uh, video card test screen up. Now we're booting. That's good, that's good. Okay, a couple of hiccups here on my way through all this. I had this uh, shielded wire, which I thought was really nice, that a friend had given me. He had picked it up at the dump uh, a couple of years ago, and he brought me a whole spool. And we thought the reason they had thrown it out was because somebody had unspooled it incorrectly, and it was a bit tangled. But you can cut nice pieces out of it and use it. Well, I disconnected the two sensors that I thought were bad and connected the two new sensors up and guess what? Shorting this wire has been a huge part of my problem for a long time. Frustrating. Uh, well, now I know why this wire was in the dump. It wasn't just a tangle. They probably threw it out for a reason. So, see you later. I went and grabbed some Cat5 because it's what I had handy. It's relatively thin. I plugged it in. I connected to the 3.3 volt connector again because uh, that's how I was wired uh, previous. Uh, but back when I had more sensors on, I had bumped up to the 5 volt. And so I went to enumerate the sensors and they didn't show up. Very frustrating. I said, what's going on here? And then I uh, remembered that I had fiddled with the Easy Connect board a bit. So I zoomed in here to take a look at this uh, resistor and make sure it was on the right uh, pin for GPIO4, which it is. But then I also realized that the resistor is wired into the 5 volt bus and not the 3.3 volt bus. So uh, was not working because of that. So I'm going to take uh, the power feed off of the uh, 3.3 volt bus and go to the 5 volt bus and then our sensors should come up and enumerate and we should be able to get on with business here. Um, so the DS18B20 will work on 3.3 volts. It will also work, I think it's rated up to 5.5 volts. Uh, if I remember I'll throw a data sheet link down below. Anyway, that's where we're at. I'm going to boot this baby back up after I switch over and then hopefully everything will be gravy. Alright, so here we are, wired to the 5 volt bus. So 5 volt going to power on the DS18B20, data going to data, the yellow lead, uh, 5 volt going to the red lead, which is power, and uh, ground going to the black lead, which is ground. Let's boot it and shoot it. Master breaker on. Power on. Ah, we have the boot light. We have the boot screen. I think we're getting somewhere. Wait. Here we go. Switch to the directory. List it. Just showing Busmaster 1. We'll do the mod probe commands. Uh, 
Uh, starting to enumerate sensor addresses here. Several tries at listing the sensors. We're not getting them showing up entirely yet, but we are starting to enumerate addresses. Okay. After much frustration and a little bit of thread reading from a thread I saved on one wire issues with Raspberry Pi, sensors not showing up. I'll share the link below. Uh, I'm going to try using the 3.3 volt bus. I think I said 3.7 before, but it's 3.3. I'm going to try using a 3.3 volt bus uh, instead of the 5 volt bus. So I've moved this resistor over to pick up the 3.3 volt bus and then, uh, of course, tie it to the uh, GPIO4. So we'll, uh, we'll try that. Maybe that's been part of the problem all along. Well. After a tremendous amount of frustration and rereading and rereading and rereading the thread that I will share in the link below, I discovered I did make a wiring issue, and that's probably been the source of my issues with the sensors for a long, long time. Probably since I put the new Easy Connect card in. Uh, so I looked a little bit closer at this board, and uh, sorry for this crappy focus and come to find out I ran that resistor to pin 11 not pin 7 if I move this wire here you should be able to see that a little better so it should be going in here and it's going in here so I'm gonna move that over and hopefully my my one wire essentials will work so errors I was getting with those 00, zero type addresses, not getting the full sensor address to enumerate. Uh, if you look in that thread, a couple things, I'll make a point of them right here. Uh, one, if you're getting that 00, zero address, you probably have your connections wrong. Double check your connections, triple check your connections, or in my case, recheck them 30 times until you get it right. <laughs> Feeling a bit stupid about that, but... Uh, even the smartest people make mistakes sometimes. Um, and two, uh, you should not run 5 volt to run this on a Raspberry Pi. The DS18B20 will take up to 5.5 volts, but uh, you don't want to put the 5 volts into the GPIO port here, uh, even through the pull-up resistor from what I read in that thread. So uh, there's a possibility you'll burn out your GPIO port. I don't think I've done that, but we'll find out once I get this uh, moved over. Anyway, uh, sorry to drag you through the long way here, but uh, I think this is a good diagnostics video for people who might be having issues or struggling with one-wire sensors. So I hope this helps someone. I'm going to straighten this out, and we should be online and flying. And just for good measure. Alright, so I just booted back up after making those changes and lo and behold the sensors work and immediately report their addresses correctly. Thank God. Alright, so uh, make sure your connections are good and then re-make sure your connections are good and then re-re-re make sure your connections are good. <laughs> so uh, end of the day, just to review, one wire sensor, you want data out of GPIO 4, which is pin 7, you want 3.3 volt power to power and ground, you want your resistor between your 3.3 volts and your data line, that's your pull up resistor. That should be a 4.7K ohm resistor. And then as long as you've enabled uh, the one wire overlay through Raspi config, you should be good to go. You should be able to go right up and do a list on the directory sysbusw1 devices. And you should see the addresses of the devices come back as 
basically as file names. So uh, when you do the Raspi config part, you just go uh, sudo Raspi config, and you go into interfacing options, and you enable the one wire overlay. All right. I hope this is helpful to someone. Sure was to me. <laughs> I hope you'll uh, tune in, like, subscribe, watch again, share with others. And uh, thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seas Network.